Mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Man, y'all, I tell you what, y'all doing good in here. Everybody getting getting scattered out, not being not being uh, next to anybody that you didn't come with. Appreciate y'all doing that. Uh, hopefully that uh, that's going to be something that ain't going to last a whole lot longer. Um, you know, we do know in in Erath County, we've 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 seen as you've watched it. Uh, seen cases and everything uh, increasing over the over the last week. So, man, bear with it. Bear with it. Uh, I'm telling you, God's going to do something amazing with this. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here this morning. We appreciate you guys tuning in online and on the radio. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but, uh, man, I'm excited for what God has in store for us this morning. Amen? Amen. All right. Hey, let me pray, and uh, then I'm going to sit down and shut up and let the band lead us in a time of worship, and we're going to get this thing kicked off. Y'all pray with me. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for, uh, man, the opportunity to come together no matter where we're at on the face of this earth. Lord, we thank you for the ability, the, the, the freedom that you give us to worship you. Lord, we ask this morning, God, as, 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 as we come together in person, as we come together online, as we come together on the radio, Father, we, just, we, we ask that everything that we do, Father, that it brings you glory, and that it brings you praise. God, we, uh, man, you know what's going on out there in our world. Uh, Lord, we need you. We need your peace. Father, we need your hope. And Lord, we need your forgiveness. So God, I ask this morning, Lord, if there, what, whatever we walk, Lord, whatever we've come to this time with, Lord, if, it, if it's anger, if it's bitterness, if it's, uh, Father, if, man, if, if, if no matter what it is, Lord, I pray that we can set all that aside. Lord, we can lay it down at your feet. And, Father, that we can worship you and we can learn this morning. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Years I spent in vanity.
know y'all probably wondering, well, hey, what are you doing up there when uh, they're still up there? No, I'm not going to sing for you. I promise you that. Uh, thank God. I know. I know. I know. I know. But uh, last week, uh, last week they played a song for us and sang a song for us, um, and it was it was one of those songs that for me, um, you, you know, music is powerful. You know, uh, music and the and the message of uh, of the songs are so powerful. Uh, you know, and, and I, I've been one of those that's been guilty of it so many times that, you know, maybe you just listen to the music and, and, and you're, not, you're not really truly listening to the words, all right? Uh, last week as they, as they played and as they sang this song, the words began to really resonate with me. And, and they began to really just, I, I, you know, God, I mean, just really just hammer on me. And uh, so, so, so through that, sitting over there with, with that opportunity, and I, I told Tracy, I said, you know, it's, uh, it had been so long for me since I had just come to church and just uh, had an opportunity to sit uh, that I forgot, I forgot a little bit what that was like. And uh, so sitting there as they're, as they're playing this song, and I've asked them to play it again for you today because uh, uh, for me it was one of those things about halfway through the song, uh, it, it was immediate for me that, you know, okay, God, that's, that's the message for next Sunday. And, and I believe the title of the song is different. Is that correct? And uh, by Micah Tyler, but, but, but I, wa I, wa I want to share this with you uh, because of the message behind this song and, and, and where, they were, where, they, where he was going with it. Now, I don't remember if this was before he wrote the song or after he wrote the song. You can, you can Google that and you can find it. Uh, but, but, but this was a guy that, uh, man, his grandmother um, had, uh, had blood cancer. And, and they were watching her go through all this chemo and all this stuff, losing her hair and just being sick and all of that. Uh, it wasn't too long after that, uh, Hurricane Harvey hit. And uh, he, he talks about it dumping 44 inches of rain uh, that, that ended up coming into their house. Uh, and then right after that, within weeks after that, he found out that his younger brother had uh, stage 4 colon cancer. And, and you know, the, 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 the thing about it is... We've all, every, every one of us in here, everybody watching this, we, we've all had those tragedies and those storms in our lives. We've all experienced that. Um, one of the things through this song that he found himself doing, you know, he was praying, you know, God, God, man, take that cancer away. Uh, you know, God, can you, can you just stop the storms? You know, God, can you just, can you, can you just do this? And, 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 and in, in this interview that I watched with him, he made this very profound statement about this. Um, he realized that the best thing to ask for was, Jesus, can you change me? All right. Now, folks, we need to think about that. We truly need to think about that. And so as, 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 as they play and as they sing this song for you, uh, folks, I, I'm just, I, and this is, this is going to be the launching point for the message today uh, because the message is, is entitled different. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you, don't, don't, don't just mouth the words, okay? All right, don't just mouth. Some of us, we can't sing worth a flip. I get that. I know that. I, I'm one of those. But what I do know is we can allow our hearts to worship, okay? The message that is contained within this song is going to be one of the challenges that we're going to present to each and every one of us today for us to be different, okay? So as they play this final song here before we get into the message, guys, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to beg you. I'm going to beg you. I don't beg you very often, but I'm going to beg you this morning to listen, to not only listen, but hear what God wants you to hear this morning. Thank you. 
pray with me? Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather together today, whether that be in person or on the radio or on the computer. I pray that you would just show us something today that you need us to hear. And I pray that everything that happens here today would be for you and because of you. In your son's precious name, amen. I had to uh, I had to apologize to Cody and Emily this week. I, I know they don't like getting texts from me, um, you know, because I, I try to stay away from the stuff that that, that I'm not good at, and uh, music is one of those things. And uh, when I when I ask them, you know, hey, can you do this song again? I always feel like I'm I'm, I'm overstepping my bounds and stuff. But uh, man, I tell you what, uh, never any never any waiver there. And I and I thank all of y'all for uh, man for that uh, for 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 doing that for me today, uh, guys. As as I just shared with you, uh, as they sang that song last week, uh, I, as, as I sat there and I listened to it. Uh, you know that 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 whole that whole chorus that whole line. I want to be different. Uh, was was what I had to write down. And uh, as 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 I wrote that down, it took me to the point to where. Uh, and and you just have to understand how how I, how I study, uh, especially how I study a passage of scripture. I've got questions that I ask. You know who, uh, how, why. Uh, you know, or questions that I ask as, as I begin to look at the scripture. And as I wrote that down, I man, I, I, I jotted down those same questions uh, with the main one sticking out to me was why? You know, why, why, why would I want to be different? Uh, why, why would I want to be changed? And, you know, especially with everything that everything that's going on um, in, in, in our world today. Now, now guys, I'm going to tell you, uh, and I'm, I, man, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very, 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 honest with you here from the standpoint because what we're going to talk about today where God has taken me with this is a very difficult subject uh, it can be a very difficult uh, topic uh, to talk about okay and 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 so you know guys I, I, I want you to be prepared for that uh, but at the same time we also need to understand that that this is a topic if you would that the church needs to be addressing that the church needs to be talking about. That as, as, as a Christian, okay, uh, more, more specifically and more importantly, as a Christian, we need to be talking about this. We need to be having these conversations, uh, and we need, to be, we need to be addressing the issue, uh, you know, the issue at, at, at hand, uh, no matter how hard it is to talk about it. Because here, here, here's, the, here's the other side of this. Here's the other side of this. Here's what we know, all right? Um, you know, and, and I can't speak for any of you. Okay, I can't speak for anybody else out there. The only person I can speak for uh, is, is myself. And, and, and as, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as an individual, as a person who has made that choice uh, to, to give their life to Jesus, uh, as an individual who has invited Jesus into their heart, and, and as an individual who has professed that he is the Lord of my life, then, then, then the truth of the matter is there must be something different about me. Okay, there must be something different in how I conduct myself. There must be something different in, in how I think. There must be something different in how I treat other people. Uh, there must be something that, that, that you know, I'm, I want to say unique about me. And, and, and the reality of that concept is, is that every one of us, every single one of you out there that has that relationship with Christ, guys, there's got to be something different about you. There's got to be something, uh, something that stands out that, that, that people see, man, hey, they are different. They are different. There is something unique about them, all right? Now, now with that, guys, I mean, I want to jump into the Word because I've got several passages of Scripture that I want to share with you this morning. But where we're going to start, uh, we're going to start in Romans, and it's going to be Romans chapter 12. Uh, if you got your Bibles, open up there. If you don't have your Bibles, words are going to be up there on the screen for us. Uh, online, they're going to, they should be popping up on your computer, your smart device, whatever you're watching on. Uh, Romans 12, and I'm going to read two verses to you here. Romans 12, beginning in verse 1, verses 1 and 2. Check this out. He says, And so, dear brothers and sisters... I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. 
This is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Will y'all pray with me? Father, we thank you for this opportunity this morning, Lord, man, to, to jump into your word. Father, to have an opportunity to have a time, Lord, where we can worship you. Father, I pray this morning, Lord, as, as everything that we're all facing, uh, Lord, all, all, the, all the bad stuff that, that's continually being thrown at us here. Uh, Father, man, I just pray that we can, Lord, we can set all that stuff aside. And, Lord, we can allow our focus to be on you this morning. Father, we can allow us to have our focus on your word and what your word is telling us this morning. Lord, I, man, I know, God, I know that there's, there's so many people in here. There's so many people watching, hearing, listening, whatever it may be. Uh, Father, that, man, they're, they're dealing with some stuff. Man, they've got some junk that's going on around them. And, and, and Lord, man, they, they, they need some relief right now. And so, Father, man, I, God, I ask that, Lord, just for the next few minutes, Lord, that your spirit would just encourage them. Father, man, I, God, I ask for the blessing of the reading of your word here this morning. Jesus, I pray that the words that are spoken, Father, that it is your words, that it's not my words, that it's not my ideas, that it's not my agenda. But, Father, it is what your word is speaking to each and every one of us. Lord, bless each and, one, each and every one that's here. Father, bless each and every one that's watching and listening. Lord, help us this morning. When we, when, Lord, when we leave, whether when we go out of our house, whether we get out of our car, uh, Father, when we walk out of this building, Father, let us be different. Let us be different than when we were when we walked in. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in your name. Amen. Now, guys, as we look at this, and, and y'all, you know, most of you, most of you know that, man, sometimes I can be a definition, per, uh, a definition person for the simple fact that, man, you know, I, I understand and I know and I get words have power, okay? Uh, words can either build someone up or words can tear someone down. Uh, and, and, and what a word means and using the word in the right context and everything. And, and, and so what I want to share with you, you know, as we, as we look at, you know, we look at a title, you know, different, let's be different, you know, in the, in the Oxford English Dictionary. All right, now I picked pick the Oxford English Dictionary because it sounded really fancy to me. I'm not going to lie to you there, all right? It sounded more, it sounded it sounded like it was more important than Webster when you when you put Oxford in front of it. I don't know if it, if it does or not, but here's what the Oxford English Dictionary says about different. Number one, it says, not the same as another or each other, unlike. And then the second thing it says, and this is the one that I love, distinct and separate. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you right there, that word distinct really jumped off the pages at me because that is a word, I mean, that tells me something right there that as a Christian, uh, if I'm going to be different than, than, than folks, I need to be distinct. Now, there's a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people tell you, well, Jimmy, you are distinct. You know, I man, I, I get that, but I want to make sure it's in a good way. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody get that? You know, we, we, we need to be distinct in a way that doesn't bring honor and glory to ourselves, but be distinct in a way that brings honor and glory uh, to Jesus Christ. You know, and so my question with that, the question that I ask to myself and the question that I pose to each and every one of us today, you know, is this question right here. What sets you apart from the world? What's, what, 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 what distinguishes you from the world? What is it about you? What is it about you that stands out, that stands apart from everything else that's going on out there in the world? You know, and, and, and to, go, to go another step with that is, does the world see you as different? Does the world, does the community, do the people, do your lost friends that, that, that you're around, maybe that you hang out with, do they see you, do they see you as being different? Now, I'm not talking about different. I'm not talking about being distinct in a negative connotation. Understand that everything here is positive this morning. Everything here is positive. But does the world see you in a different way? Do they see that you're different? Do they see that, man, do they see that you have that relationship with Christ? Do they see that, you know, man, there's something special? How about that? There's something special about them. Now, folks, last week, last week before Joel preached, and, and you know, here's the other side of that. And I don't know if you noticed it, but that song 
that song different. You know, it wasn't just me that that song got a hold of because Joel referenced it multiple times during, his, during the message that God gave him last Sunday, all right? It, 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 was that, it was that powerful of a moment, and that reminded me, that told me, man, the Holy Spirit is moving through this thing, okay? So, God, so guys, with that, I, I, I made a statement before, before he preached up here, and, and, and that statement was because of everything that was going on. Everything that was taking place, what we were being bombarded with, you know, and, and, and folks, this is not, this is not, please understand this, this is, this is not a political message. This is not a, cons you know, heaven forbid it was a conspiracy message. I've told you my feelings on that. Uh, this is not an agenda-driven message or anything like that, okay? Because I guarantee you there better be a lot of churches talking about this topic today because it's that important. But I made the statement to you that as a Christian, Okay, as a Christian, if you profess to have Jesus Christ in your heart, if you profess to be living for Christ, then, then, then there cannot be, and, and guys, I want to emphasize that to you, there cannot be one single hint, okay, you understand that? There cannot be one single hint of racism in your heart. It cannot be there. If you profess to be living your life for Jesus, then that is something, guys, that is a topic, that is an issue that cannot coexist in a heart where Jesus resides. You must be different. We must be different. Now, the reality of this is, the re I'm a 70s child, okay, born in 1971. And, and, and so for, for the purpose of, of, of really trying to learn something about this, man, I, man I, 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 I had to go back and I had to do some research and I had to be re-educated on some things this last week, okay? Because I want you to understand how God hit me with this. Uh, you know, some, some of you in here grew up you were raised in a time period, um, in, in, a, in a time period of the, of the history of America. You were raised and you went to school in a segregated school, okay? Now, for so, some of the younger people in here that might not understand what that word means or might not know what that word means, uh, to put it simply, it meant that the white kids went to school over here and the black kids went to school over here, all right? Now, you know, luckily our Supreme Court in 1954, uh, I believe it was Brown versus the Board of Education or something like that, uh, the Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional in 1964, okay? In 1960, uh, excuse me, 1954, they made that ruling that it was unconstitutional for schools to be segregated that way, all right? Now, fast forward, fast forward. In this, everybody proud to be a Texan in here? If you're a Texan, some of you Floridians that are, you know, transplanted or Californians or whatever, you proud to be in Texas, aren't you? Greatest state in the union, if you would, all right? But now check this out, folks, check this out. It wasn't until 1970. Think about this. 1970, that wasn't that long ago. In 1970, there was a judge in East Texas, a judge in East Texas that ruled, that ruled that all schools in Texas must desegregate. 1970, folks. The Supreme Court ruling happened in 1954. It wasn't until 1970. And, and we sit here, and some people want to think, well, yeah, well, man, hey, that might have just applied to, uh, to, to some East Texas school. Longview. Longview was a school that was in the, in, in, in the middle of that. But it wasn't just Longview, folks. It, it went all the way out to the good old people in West Texas in San Angelo, Texas. Okay? 1970, before our schools in the state of Texas desegregated. Think about that. Folks, that is sad. That is sad. I was born in 1971, 1971, and I knew nothing about that, nothing at all about that. As recently as 2016, as recently as 2016, everybody in here remembers 2016, there were still schools in Mississippi that are segregated. Think about that, folks. Think about that. That's the world and that's the culture that we live in, but it's the world that so many times we don't want to talk about. We want to close our eyes to it or we want to brush it off and we want to say, well, man, hey, that doesn't happen here. That doesn't exist here. Baloney. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, I told Tracy Wednesday because, man, I had to, man, I had to do some soul searching Wednesday evening. I'm going to share something here with you in a second because I had to reach out to some former students. But, guys, here's, here's what I want you to understand with this. You know, my, my point with this is there's some of you that are in here, and, and you know, God, God, man, God bless your parents. But there's some of you in here, you were raised, and your parents taught you 
your parents taught you that, that, that you were better because of your skin color. You understand that? There's some of you that were raised that way. I get that. I understand that. I'm not agreeing with it because it's as wrong as wrong can be. I'm not talking bad about your parents because you could ask them, well, why do you think that? Well, that's what my granddad, and my, that's what my mom and dad thought. Well, why do they believe that? Well, that's what, their, that's what grandma, grandpa, going on and on and on and on and on and on down the line, but nobody can ever find anything in the Bible about that, of why they believe that. Folks, we have to be different. Our word that we read this morning there in Romans, man, verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. As a church, as a Christian, he's telling us, don't, don't copy the behaviors of people who don't have that relationship with Jesus. You've got to be different. You've got to be willing to, you've got to be willing to stand up for those that are oppressed. You see, when I allow myself as a Christian to get drugged into that stuff, when I allow myself to, to sit there and, and, and doubt God's love for somebody else because they look different than me, then you know what I just did? Folks, I just allowed Satan to have the victory. I just allowed that sucker to win. And I tell you what, the history of our nation, we've been allowing Satan to win for a long, long time. It's time for the church, it's time for us as Christians to truly be different. You know, I've realized and I know, I know, just like, and I'm, I'm going to say this, because, because I, don't see, I don't see a single black person in here with us this morning. So here's the reality of this. There is not a single one of us in this room. I, I don't know who's watching online. I don't know who's listening on the radio. But what I can say is in this room, in this, in this sanctuary right now, there's not a single one of us in here that understands or knows what it's like to live as a black man in America today or as a black woman in America today. None of us understand that. None of us know that. And you say, well, man, it's no different than me. Let me tell you this. We were blessed with an opportunity to serve at a church down by Waco uh, for, for a few years. Now, the demographics in Waco and the demographics in Dublin and Stephenville are, are completely different, okay? Completely different. Um, I, I, man, I, had, I, I was privileged, and I, and I reached out to a few of our former students this last week, and, and I asked them some very tough questions, questions that I never asked them while we were there because I had to have some answers. I had to know what they experienced. And, and guys, let me tell you this, and, 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 and understand this. You know, a couple of those kids actually spent time in Erath County uh, getting their education at Tarleton State University, okay? But now hear this. I want you to hear this. As I reached out to them and as I asked them questions on, on strictly race stuff, here, here's what one of them told me. Now, now don't, nobody jump ahead of me with, with, when I begin to share this with you, okay? Um, but, but one of them shared that in the span of a year, in the span of a year, he had documented being pulled over 22 times, okay? 22 times. Th those are the ones that he documented, 22 times. Uh, on one occasion, he got pulled over for a busted taillight, okay? And, 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 and when in, in, in the document, in a matter of five minutes, there was 10 police officers that surrounded him, okay? In, in, t in, in five minutes. Now, now, let me say this. I don't say that to say anything negative towards police. I want you to understand that because, I, man, guys, I, I support our police. I, I do. But here's the other side of that. We lived down in that area for almost three years, for almost three years. Uh, he was told that, man, he was in a high drug area. If any of y'all ever had been in Waco and went to Hillcrest Baptist Hospital, I'm going to tell you something. Hillcrest Baptist Hospital was in a very high drug area. When we were doing youth ministry down there, I, I made multiple trips a week to Hillcrest Baptist Hospital through a very high drug-induced neighborhood. And in, in, in the almost three years that we were there, you know how many times I got pulled over? A big fat zero, not one single time. Not one single time. was Guys, I have not been pulled over. I'm 48 years old, and I have not been pulled over 22 times in my life. Now, I'm not saying that every one of those times he was pulled over wasn't justified because there's a good possibility sucker probably was speeding or something. You know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know that. But I'm going to tell you right now, when all the, the thousands of miles that I've drove from here to post taking care of, uh, helping take care of my mom, you know how many times I was stopped? Boom, zero zero and there was lots of times that i needed to i'm not going to lie to you You understand folks i will never understand what it's like to live as a black person i never will i will never ever ever understand that as a christian though we have a responsibility to allow god to transform us check this out the second part of romans 12 2 the second part says this but let god transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. 
All right, did you hear that? Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Folks, there's some of us, we got to change the way we think. We've got to change the way we think when it comes to looking at somebody else. And, and the reality of this is, guys, it's, just, it's not just about skin color, but it's also about an economic status. It's also about looking at someone that maybe they come from a family that, you know what, man, maybe their family has done some stupid stuff. You know, we can't just lump them into it just because, just because of where they were born or who they were born to. You know, we've got to allow God to transform us. You know, uh, change the way you think. Genesis 1, 27 says, So God, and I, man, I, folks, I love this. I love this. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Now, check this out because here's where he gets specific in how he created us, all right? Uh, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, if you notice in that text, if you notice there in Genesis 1, nowhere does it say that he separated them or he made them based upon skin color, All right, that, that he made some black, he made some white, he made some brown, he made some tan, he made some red or beige, what, whatever color we want to come up with. No, that is not what God says. That's not what his word says. His word says, so God created human beings in his own image. You know, guys, some, some, some people will ask, you know, well, Jimmy, why, 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 is, why, are you so, why are we even talking about this this morning? I don't want to talk about this stuff. I've seen it on the news. Well, folks, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't see the bigger picture at play, because here's the reality of it. Here's where God has taken me with this. You know, we, 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 we've, had, we've gone through this season with this COVID-19 virus. And, and what, did God, what did God allow to happen there? Man, he allowed us to kind of kind of close the doors, if you would, and he allowed us to go out. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, I believe God was preparing us. I told you throughout that that I believe God had something big in store. Well, guys, I'm telling you, I believe what he had in store that's big, we're, we're about to see it come to fruition because I believe he was preparing us to truly go out and be the church to all people that God created us to be and not allow it to be confined with inside the walls of our beautiful sanctuaries and our beautiful buildings or whatever it may be. Guys, God is calling us to go out. Colossians 3, 10 through 11 says this. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Now check this out. You guys that have been studying Galatians with me, this ought, this ought, this ought to jump out to you right here in verse 11. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Folks, do you hear that? Do you hear what he's saying? I'm going to tell you right now, you need to praise God for that. Folks, we need to be lifting the roof off of this place, simply praising God because what he says, Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Well, I need an amen from somebody. Boy, I'm going to tell you, man, whoo, Lord have mercy. That is all that matters. That is all that matters. Christ is all that matters. And, folks, he lives in all of us. No matter what somebody's skin color is. No matter what their economic status is. No matter how they were brought up. No matter where they went to school. Man, no matter, no matter how they were raised, Jesus Christ is all that matters. When we judge somebody or we put somebody down based upon the color of their skin, then I'm going to tell you right now, that is a sin. That is a sin that comes from the depths of hell, and Jesus will have nothing to do with it. He will have nothing to do with it. When we allow that mess to come into our hearts, folks, I'm telling you right now, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a follower of Jesus while at the same time being racist towards another human being. You cannot do it. You say, well, preacher, prove that to me. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, where Jesus exists, there is no sin. There is no sin. There is no sin. Some of you need to change the way you think. Some of you need to change the way that you've been brought up. Some of you guys, I'm going to tell you right now, some of you, I, I, I never, I, I did not experience, I did not experience, or I, I did not see racism until God took us down to that part of the state of Texas. Okay? I never experienced it until then. We, 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 we were serving in a community that was 50% black and 50% white. We were serving at a church that was 100% white. 
when we left there, we had a good 150 kids in that youth ministry every Wednesday night, constantly. I never heard, never, never, and it's part of the reason why we left, never heard one single time, man, you know, Jimmy, Tracy, y'all, y'all have done an amazing job here. We can't believe all these teenagers. Can't believe what God has used y'all for there. We never heard that one single time. But if we heard it once, we heard it a hundred times. Boy, y'all sure do have a lot of black kids here. You dang straight we do. You dang straight we do. I might have told you all this before, but one of the greatest things, they've got a historical room in there. And I love that church, I do. If any of them people are watching, y'all know my feelings, all right? They've got a historical room. And once something gets in that historical room, it don't, it, it's, that, that historical room is sacred. I, it is. They don't touch it. And once it's in there, it does not come out. I mean, that's like bad juju or something. I don't know. Uh, we, we, the, our last, last group of kids that we took to camp, we had, we probably, I don't remember how many we took, but we had a good 20 to 30 who were African-American kids. And we took a big old camp picture. All right. I went and framed that sucker. And I took it in that historical room and I planted it front and center. The last time I was down there, I went in there. I got a picture on my phone. That sucker is still, I'm telling you, that room's, that room's sacred. They don't touch nothing in there. It's still there. It's still there. Why? Because that was a representation of the community. Folks, we've got to be different. We've got to be different. We've got to be different. I close with this as we go back. I typically write out my closings, and I, you know, for some reason with this, I, I, I couldn't write out a closing with this. Um, and God, God, you know, I knew because God, God's taken me back to where we started with this today. Back to Romans 12, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. In verse 2, folks, if you have not highlighted this verse in your Bible, if you have not underlined it, you need to do this. You need to memorize this verse. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You see, guys, you see, guys, when we allow God to change how we think, when we allow God to change how we look at other people, when we allow God to change our mindset, you see, you know, somebody say, well, man, hey, that, 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 that group of people, they brought that on themselves. I ain't going there. Then you will learn to know God's will. We first got to change the way we think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing perfect do you want to be different folks I do I want to be different I want to be different I want to be different than what the world tells me is man hey this is this this is how things are this is the way they've always been this is the way they're going to be uh-uh, I call baloney on that I want to be different and I believe every last one of you in here too if you know Jesus folks I believe you want to be different too the only way we can do that is by knowing Jesus Christ. And so my question to you now is, do you know him? Do you know him? Because if you do, he's given you that ability and he's given you that opportunity to be different. I'm going to pray for you if that, if that thing don't sting me. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask you to stand right where you're at. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, guys, I'm going to give you that opportunity through this prayer. Folks, if, 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 if you need to come down as the band closes us in a song, if you, if, 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 and I'm just going to tell you, I'm just going to tell you, you can hear message, you can hear word, you can read the word, you can, you can, you can, hear, you can hear challenges every single day of your life uh, that deal with racism, that talk about that. But guys, I'm going to tell you right now, the only way to get that out of your life, the only way to get that out of your heart is to confess it to God. If you need to do that, if you need to do that, then, man, I encourage you. I encourage you to be real with God because God knows. It's not about you telling me. It's not about coming to confessional or anything like that, but it's about being real with God. And if we will confess that to him, God, take this away from me. Change the way I think. Change the way I look at this. I promise you. I promise you he will. Folks, let's be different. Let's be different. Let's allow him to change us. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you this morning, Lord, I just, ooh, Father, I pray I did not mess this up. God, you know where my heart's at. Father, you know where every single heart in, Lord, you know where every heart is at. Lord, you know hearts that are bitter, 
hearts that are hardened, and Father, hearts that are broken and struggling. God, I, man, I, I pray for a unity within those hearts, Lord, that you would unite us. God, that you would unite your church, not on denomination, not on, not on race, God, not on, not, not, not on methods, but Father, that your church would be united in a way that this country needs it so, so bad. Father, I pray for lives to be changed. God, I pray that your word, Lord, the conviction that comes from your word, Father, that it would be, Lord, it would, it would remove that burden and that weight that so many people carry around. Father, help us to be real with you. Lord, right now I ask if there's someone in here, if there's someone watching that doesn't know you, if they've never given their life to you, Father, I'm going to ask that you speak to their hearts right now. If that's you, if you've never invited Jesus in, this prayer right here is for you. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know you died on that cross for my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I ask you to save me. Father, if they had the courage to call out to you right there, if I, Lord, I just ask that you give them the courage to make it known, to follow through with believers' baptism. Lord, to tell their neighbor, to tell, Lord, to tell me, to tell somebody that, man, they have invited you in. Lord, to give them the courage to comment if they're watching online that, man, hey, I asked Jesus into my heart. God, I just, man, I pray, Lord, for boldness for each and every one of us that we would be willing to stand up. Lord, we would be willing to stand up and speak out in order to make the changes that need to be made. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. God bless you guys. Love y'all. Y'all have a great week, okay?